difficulty. So it's a pleasure to introduce um, Arana Fear, um, who's going to talk to us about the potential of PREG and TIGIT blockade in addressing immunotherapy resistance. So if you can hear us, uh, Aran, then please go ahead with your talk. Yes, thank you. So I would like to thank the organizers for giving us the opportunity to present our data. Okay, so the DINAM1 access is an access of co-stimulatory and negative checkpoints, which are expressed by T and NK cells. So in the center of this axis is DINAM1, which is a co-stimulatory molecule, which delivers stimulatory signals to activate T and NK cells. And PVRG and TIGIT are two parallel dominant complementary inhibitory pathways. Both PVRG and TIGIT can directly deliver inhibitory signals into T and NK cells, but they're also binding TGIT PVR and PVRG PVRL2, which are ligands of DINAM. And since they bind these ligands in higher affinity compared to DINAM, they deprive DINAM for its co-stimulatory activity. So these are the main pathways in DINAM1 access as we see it, and we are learning this pathway for more than a decade now since we published and discovered the TGITs around the time that Genentech published about these targets, and later on we discovered PVRIG. So PD-1 actually also intersects with this pathway because PD-1 dephosphorylates intercellularly DINAM1. And actually, if you block DINAM1 or knock it out in preclinical models in mice, PD-1 blockers completely lose their activity to enhance uh, um, um, immunity. So actually, we're talking about a three-pathway story in which we have PVRG, TIGIT, and PD-1 all interacting with this important co-stimulatory stimulatory molecule, DINAM1, and we in Compugen, being uh, um, 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 discovered PVRG and TIGIT, we also developed blocking antibodies, which are now in clinical testing. We have COM701, who blocks the interaction of PVRG with PVRL2, and TIGIT, which blocks the interaction, uh, COM902, sorry, that blocks the interaction of TIGIT with PVR. And we are now testing in clinical settings the combination of PVRG, TIGIT, and PD1 blockade. And at least in some tumor types, in which all three pathways are dominant, you might they need to block, all, to block all three to get optimal T cell activation. So preclinically, this was shown, and we have shown it extensively. If you use COM701 and combine it uh, with TIGIT, with PD-1, and most importantly, when you triple blockade with TIGIT, PVRG, and PD-1 blockade, you get the optimal T cell activation. And we have shown it in multiple models and published on this. Now going back a bit to some basic T cell biology. So when Naive T cell encountering antigen, it starts to differentiate. And at the beginning, the cells which are in early differentiation state, the stem like memory T cells, then the central memory T cells, still express molecules like CCR7, which enable them to home to the lymph nodes. They express co stimulatory molecule like C28, that enables them to receive proper co stimulation from uh, the rhythmic cells when they are being primed. And these early differentiated cells have a potent cell renewal capacity and quite poor killing capacity of tumors. And the more cells differentiate, becoming effector memory, effector, and later on also exhausted, they are gaining in vitro capacity to kill tumor cells when directly plated in a plate, in a tissue culture plate, but they're also losing their ability to self renew and proliferate. And it was shown more than a decade ago by Nicolas Restifo that in adopted T cell transfer context, even though the early differentiated cells, they started with central memory, have reduced capacity to directly kill tumor cells, in vivo, these cells can generate waves of effector cells. They differentiate when they meet the antigen. They are gener generating waves of effector cells that penetrate the tumor. And they're actually more efficient in vivo in elim eliminating tumor than the effector T cells. Later on, uh, the same group have shown that the stem-like memory T cells, which are even earlier differentiated, have even stronger capacity when adoptively transferred into patient, in, into mice. And then uh, Steve Rosenberg has shown that in patients, in his teal product that infuse melanoma patients, even though most of the cells are differentiated and exhausted, there are a small proportion of stem-like CDA T cells which are proliferating upon transferring to the patients. And actually, these are the most important cells mediating the actual response. So then later on, it was shown also in the context of checkpoint blockade. So TCF7, with, uh, which is a hallmark marker of these cells, when you have more TCF7 positive cells, you get better response to a checkpoint blockade. And then it was shown also in mice and in many other studies. 
not to say that exhausted T cells and reinvigoration of exhausted cells, which is the main initial dogma for checkpoint blockade, is not still holds. But important part of response to at least to PD1 is mediated by these cells which have high proliferative capacity. So it was shown by Melman and uh, others that these stem like memory T cells have lower expression of PD1 and PGIT, but then they can differentiate and, um, and put it generate again additional waves of effector cells. These cells then penetrate the tumor, they become more exhausted, and then also express other uh, checkpoints like TGIT, uh, LAG3. And we wanted to see, okay, so how is PVRG in this context? So using our computational discovery, we did an unsupervised principal component analysis, trying to see where is the dominant expression of the different checkpoints. And as expected, even though, as I've just shown you, PD-1 and TGIT have some expression on the early differentiated stem-like memory T cells, most of the checkpoints uh, are here, clustered with exhausted cells, meaning that the dominant expression of checkpoints, as we all know, is on exhausted cells, PD-1, TG, CTA-4, LAC-3, et cetera. But PVRG is unique in this regard. And PVRG, actually, the dominant expression is in the early memory cells. It's clustered here, next to C28, closest to CCR7, TCF7, and using a different clustering approach, we see exactly the same thing. All the checkpoints, together with TOX, which is the hallmark of exhaustion, uh, transcription factor, are clustered here, while PVRG, again, clustered in a completely different place, and we see it in different indication, different data sets, in this case, CRC patients, and, 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 and PVRG is really unique in this regard. And now, normally, TSCM, or early differentiated cells, are interacting with rangitic cells for driving their expansion, so for COM701 to be active, to actually activate TSCM, we need to block PVRG on the TSCM, but also PVRL2 on the rhythmic cells. So we looked into that as well. And you can see here, different DC subsets. You see some expression of PVR, the ligand of TIGIT. PD1 is there on, on a subset of activated DCs. But PVRL2, the ligand of PVRG, actually is more dominant across the different DC subsets. This is one data set, again, then in different data sets, you can see PVRL2 here, really dominant across data sets, across indication. So not only PVRG is dominant on TSCM, but PVRL2 is dominant on the key interacting cells, which are dendritic cells. And then we verified also by flow cytometry. And overall, what we think that PVRG blockade might have the capacity to enhance it, this interaction by TSCM and DCs, and then it could potentially drive additional waves of effector cells inside your tumor maybe also in less infamous tumor types, which have less disease inside to begin with. So then we looked at the use, use the Murphish technology. So this is a, a special transcriptomic approach in which you can see in the single cell, single cell level to identify different genes or probes across an FFP slide. So identify the TLS region, stroma and tumor region in this slide. Then we cluster the ce different cells based on their expression and we did identify, as expected, in the TLS, you can see B cells, plasma cells, etc. So looking at different cell types in the, uh, this tertiary lipoid structure, you can see that, uh, as expected again, B cells are localized mostly in the TLS, which is again the, the region in which uh, uh, local T cell priming occurs in the tumor microenvironment. Uh, you can also see the TSCM and naive cells, which are again early differentiated, and they're also localized to the TLS and much less in the tumor site. On the other hand, if you look at the exhausted cells, maybe, maybe as expected, these cells are actually localized more in the tumor sites, where they are being able to directly kill the tumor cells. So this all really makes sense. And then looking at the different genes of the DNA axis, you can see that maybe in correlation with PVRG expression on the stem like memory T cells, indeed PVRG is very dominant in the TLS region compared to tumor. Also other genes of the DNA access in C28, while most of the other checkpoints, and maybe again as expected, are dominant more in the tumor region itself. So this all leads to this hypothesis that we have early differentiated stem like memory T cells, which are uh, um, localizing to the lymph nodes or TLS, tertiary lymphoid structures, these cells have dominant expression of PVRIG, along with other molecules. Uh, you also have their dendritic cells, which express PVRL2. And then COM701 blockade may enhance this activation of TSCM by disease, and then drives waves of effector cells, which are penetrating directly the tumor. The ligand 
of PVRG PVR2 is expressed also in the tumor cell itself, inhibiting again the direct killing like most other checkpoints. And here comes 7 one can act again to enhance the killing of the tumor cell themselves. And this is the theory, and actually looking again in more details, using again the Murphish approach on the FFP slide of a CRC patient, you can actually really see a PVRG positive T cell interacting with an activated dendritic cells. And again, this hypothesis may support a, a, a PVRG activity or blocking activity of PVRG to enhance T cell infiltration and consequently also anti tumor activity, also in less inflamed tumor types, which are not responding to current approaches of checkpoint blockade. So we initiated a clinical trial uh, using our COM71 PVRG blocking antibody. We uh, tested it in dose escalation and, and some expansion in monotherapy in combination with nivolumab, and then also in triplet blockade, supporting a hypothesis that you need a triplet blockade to get the most optimal T cell activation, COM71 nivolumab, and the TIGIT antibody of BMS. And we published this data in conferences uh, last year. And in short, what we start to see, that we see, again, this is monotherapy data, smear plots, we have partial response and some long-term stable disease. And what is interesting is that some of these patients, which are, seems to have some clinical benefit at least from the treatment, are actually PVL2 positive and PDL1 low. Again, these PDL1 low patients normally will have less response to check for blockade. And also in combination with nivolumab, the same uh, observation. We have some responses, complete response, partial response, and some of the patients are actually PDL1 low. Supporting a hypothesis, and again, this is very initial data, of course, that potentially COM71 can drive activity in mono or combination in less inflamed tumor types. So, if, you are, uh, if our hypothesis supports activity also in periphery, in the lymph nodes, one might expect to see also some peripheral signs of immune activation, and this is what we see. We can see here that in monotherapy and in combination with nivolumab, it's not statistically significant, but the trends are very clear increased proliferation of effector memory T cells proliferating in the peripheral blood, and also in TERFO gamma, a key cytokine for anti-tumor activity, which is normally, as published data have shown, not really induced by nivolumab alone, maybe with nivolumab plus EP. So we see here a, a very strong induction for TERFO gamma, and we see a trend for stronger TERFO gamma induction with higher doses of COM71, suggesting a COM71-driven mechanism. And then in triplet blockade, what you've seen in the periphery was really striking and exactly going along what you've seen preclinically. You see really potent induction of TERFO gamma. Actually, all the patients in dose escalation that received triplet blockade of PVRG, TIGIT, and PD-1 have really strong induction of TERFO gamma, CD4, CD8 ratio increase, potent CD8 effect on memory proliferation. And again, this is a much more potent than what we have seen in monotherapy, in combination, and what was published for TIGIT and PD-1 blockade. So we think that this is actually unique to the triple, blo triple blockade. So this is a case study of a patient with primary peritoneal uh, cancer. She received three prior lines of anti-cancer therapy and she progressed. Uh, she reached into our trial. We had an archival biopsy for that patient. She was negative for PD-1 complete immune deserts, no T cells inside before the treatment at all in the archival biopsy. And these patients normally should not respond to checkpoints because checkpoints normally should have some T cells in the tumor microenvironment to respond. This patient, looking at her peripheral blood, unfortunately we didn't have post-treatment biopsy, showed really strong induction of activation, specifically in TERFO gamma, which peaked around the same top point in which we identified partial response clinically, uh, paresis criteria, of that specific patient that received COM71 monotherapy. So this is one example of a patient that even though was desert immune before treatment, responded immunologically in peripheral blood and also clinically. And then this is another patient. This patient did not respond clinically. Potentially uh, the target, uh, the, this lesion that we looked at, uh, definitely we've seen in signs of immune activation, but overall the patient progressed, but nevertheless, for this patient that we had pre and untreated biopsy, we were able to see really a massive increase in percentage of CD8 following COM7 and monotherapy treatment. Following treatment, you can see that the distance between the tumor cells and the CD8 is much reduced, suggesting a more intimate interaction between CD8 T cells and uh, the tumor cell themselves. And then looking with a, a nanostring approach, 
at uh, the genes expressed in the vicinity of the T cells. So before treatment, the T cells were residing more in a stromal environment. You can see our expression of uh, uh, SMA, of fibronectin. And then post-treatment, complete immune modulation in that, in that uh, biopsy at least. You see immune activation of the T cells, PD-1 upregulation, PD-1, and also then, of course, all the other checkpoints are coming. And this is an, uh, then an example of monotherapy induction of immune modulation in indication of iron cancer, which is normally not responsive to checkpoints. This is another case study. This is a CRC patient. This patient received four prior lines of chemotherapy and progressed through all of them. Uh, this patient received COM71 plus nivolumab, but I remind you that MSS CRC patients, in contrast to MSI CRC patients, are very, one of the poorest responders to nivolumab. The data, historical data to any kind of PD-1 blockade is very close to 0% response rate. This patient responded, and we're fortunate to have pre and non-treatment biopsy for that patient. And what we see is exactly, and again, it's one patient. We need, of course, we need to, to uh, follow up on more patients, but we see exactly what we uh, um, supporting our hypothesis of unique activity of PVRG. So before treatment, you can hardly see any T cells in the in that patient's tumor micro environment. These are the different T cell clones. And then following treatment, here in, in the blue in the blue circles, there was huge influx of new T cells. Most of them come from the periphery. One of the clones in this specific case was actually proliferating inside the tumor micro environment, potentially supporting our, our TLS hypothesis. And then you see also increasing clonality, which suggests here an antigen-specific response, potentially anti-tumor response. And then looking again by RNA sequencing, uh, this, this patient was, again, that started as very close to immune desert, was completely immune modulated, interferon gamma signature increase, increase of markers of T-cell recruitment and activation, increase of markers of T-cell, uh, of effect of function of T-cells, and again, all of this in a patient that actually did respond clinically to the treatment, an MSS-CRC patient. And then finally, we, were, we had some, for some of the patients, we had samples of pre and non-treatment, and we have uh, sufficient samples to perform an all-link analysis, which actually looked at 1,500 different uh, uh, proteins in the peripheral blood before and after treatment. And we compared here, we had here the, in this analysis two responding patients versus few other uh, uh, non-responding patients. And what we were fascinated to see that, the, so that in the top genes that were upregulated following treatment in the responders were actually markers of activated dendritic cells. So you see here uh, the hallmark of activated, you see LAMP3, HLA-DR, CD83, all of this was increased in the responding patients compared to the non-responding patients. And, you know, when T cells are interacting with the dendritic cells, there is also maturation steps also with the disease because the interaction is bilateral. And what we think, and this again, a limited number of patients, that potentially uh, an efficient COM71 activity could also re result in optimal dendritic cells activation. And this happened preferentially in the responding patients. So to summarize, we identified a few years ago PVRG, which is a novel checkpoint in the DNA1 axis. It has a unique and dominant expression on early differentiated stem-like memory T cells, which have strong proliferative potential, in addition to its expression on exhausted cells, like any other checkpoints. The ligand of PVRG, PVRL2, is dominantly expressed across different DC subtypes and is expressed in the tumor uh, uh, tertiary lymphoid structures. And therefore, PVRG blockade may enhance TSM activation by disease, resulting in increased expansion, differentiation, and this potential mechanism could lead to increased T cell expansion infiltration also in less different tumor types. And we present here preliminary data to show that COM701 or anti PVRG can actually induce TME infiltration, activation, and signs of anti tumor activity also in patients which are PVR2 positive and PD1 low, in indications like ovarian and MSS CRC. And we have now ongoing expansion, expansion clinical studies, and we are going to present data later this year showing some promising activity of COM701 in large number of patients in indications like uh, MSS, CRC, and ovarian, which again are a huge unmet need due to the nature of their TME, not responsive to checkpoint blockade. And here I stop and I can take uh, any questions. Thank you for listening. Thank, thank you very much for a 
a great talk. We're running a little bit behind due to some of the technical difficulties we had at the start, but we've probably got time for a question, if anyone has a question. And ask to please speak into the microphone because of the remote um, nature of the presenter. Well, maybe I'll just ask, ask one question. Really interesting to see the expression of your ligands in the TLS, and I wondered whether you'd seen any correlation with the presence of TLS in your patients um, with the clinical outcome that you've observed? Yeah, this is a great question. So as you probably know, it was shown that the presence of TLS correlates also with response to other checkpoints. And yes, we are following this extensively. We are correlating the expression of the ligand, the expression of the inferior itself, the presence of the ligand specifically in TLS. Uh, so this is ongoing work, and of course, once we uh, identify such correlation, we will share it, but this is ongoing. That's really interesting. Thank, thank you very much. I want to say thank you once more for calling in to present to us remotely today. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs>